So there are five types of floaters that I believe every guard should have in their skill set. Of course, every player is gonna have different shots and techniques as their bread and butter, but I believe the more of these that you can use consistently and effectively, the more situations you're gonna be prepared for during that game. So let's talk about each one and break them down a little bit. Also, really quickly, before we get into the video, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post new content every single day and you guys can stay up to date with what I'm doing. So the first one is a slight fader with that strong hand. This is where we're jumping slightly away from the rim. So watch how CJ is traveling more towards the baseline than towards the bucket in air. So why is this important? Well, most times we don't have a clear lane towards the rim if we're shooting a floater. So being able to shoot it slightly towards the side is extremely valuable. Again, these guys aren't shooting this moving towards the bucket. So it's not really a natural shot and it's generally gonna require some repetition. But also notice that all of these are with the right hand, at least for these right handers. But if we bring it up from that left hip like Mitchell here, and we do it at least somewhat unpredictably, it's hardly ever going to get blocked. So do we really need that lefty floater? I'm not sure, but that's food for thought. And also sometimes it's great to bump that defender like Trey does here, and then fade back slightly away from the bucket. The second one is a straight on floater, where we're shooting it going straight at the bucket. So this is actually a pretty different shot in terms of feel from the last one, primarily because you're extending up and forward, not out to the side a bit. So it's gonna be important to develop competency from this angle too. I normally categorize these as floaters on which you'll jump somewhat towards the rim, ending up closer to it rather than falling away from it like the last one. But because we're jumping towards the rim, there's most likely gonna be a defender right there. If they jump to contest it, we don't really need to worry about running into them for a charge, but it's also important that we're able to jump straight up and down like here if that player is looking like he might set up to take a charge. Third is a slow speed two foot floater. These are when we're able to bring ourselves to a slower speed in that paint area, and we're shooting this floater from almost a standstill. The footwork for these, just like on jump shots, is gonna vary from shot to shot and player to player. Some are out of a hop, and other get into it with a staggered footwork, with one coming down before the other. You'll see this a lot in pick and roll situations, because you can get into the lane this way without fully attacking downhill. For example, Ja gets downhill here attacking at about 50% speed, moves to the side a bit, then comes to a hop and puts up the floater. Also pay attention to the eyes on this one. On most of these, because we're moving at a slower speed, we can't telegraph the shot with our eyes and we have to be actively surveying the court. So finding and locking in on that rim quickly and efficiently is an important skill to train for these. Also, since you're at such a slow speed, you may have to separate out a bit, like you see here. Next is a rapid two foot floater. So this one doesn't necessarily have to be going at full speed. It's more so that you're shooting it in stride moving forward compared to the last one where it's from a slow walk, full stop, or a little lateral slide. I'd say that the one-two footwork is very prevalent on these, like you see on all these shots. But there are players and circumstances where you'll see a hop used more often. And this low key may be the toughest of the five, because you're attacking the rim straight on in stride, and have to come to a stop and control that floater. So this is one that really, really needs some repetition. Definitely make sure to release it at a high angle and not to flick that wrist as you let it go for maximum control. And finally is that same foot, same hand floater, which is pretty self-explanatory. Just like players use this to throw defenders timing off on finishes, the same holds true for floater. Embiid isn't expecting McCollum to jump off that right foot for the floater, so he's stuck on the ground as McCollum is already raising into that shot. And it can be big when you're already getting kind of deep in the paint. And one more step will draw you even closer to these shot blockers like right here. You'll see a lot of these, especially with high level players, in situations where we're trying to draw a foul. Like here, Trey's probably trying to get to another finish, but he gets bumped. So he takes off of that right foot to make sure that that foul is on the shot. If he had taken another step, it may not have been called a shooting foul or a foul at all. And then sometimes we'll just find ourselves needing to shoot off that quote, wrong foot. So we've got to be prepared. Five to shoot, CJ gets into the lane. Tough. So in today's game, I really believe that all of these are vital for guards games. So go try them out, rep them out, and I'm going to break each one down more in the future. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for a lot more.